If you saw my previous video on if the 256 gigabyte storage option is enough for Macs, you would know that it actually is for most people. Of course, if you have the money, upgrading to higher capacity storage options is great, but let's face it, most of us are struggling to even afford just the base model MacBook Air. That doesn't really leave much room in the budget for storage upgrades. Not to mention, if you wanted the two terabyte SSD version, you would have to cough up 800 US dollars, which is almost like buying a second MacBook Air. The good news is that you can use an external drive to store a lot of extra data and even install apps and games to it. It's actually pretty easy and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how. Now for the purposes of this video I'm using a 2TB NVMe SSD drive in an enclosure and I get around 900 megabytes per second read and write speeds which is super fast probably one of the fastest external storage options out there for the M1 Max right now. I will have another video on this channel going into this in more depth and showing you how to make one yourself, as well as testing out some different NVMe SSD enclosures to find the highest performing one. Anyway, let's jump into the screen of my M1 MacBook Air with a 256 gigabyte SSD, and I'll show you how to set up your external drive and start installing apps and games to it. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you plug in your external drive to your computer for the first time is actually format it. Now you can see I've already formatted mine before this, so it is popping up, but yours is more than likely going to be formatted for Windows. So what we can do is we can come into Disk Utility, open this up, and we're gonna select the external drive, and we're going to erase it. And we're gonna give it whatever name you want. I'm just gonna call mine NVMe just to make it easy. And we're gonna change this to APFS. Now this is obviously the Apple file system and I do recommend using this if you're gonna be using this drive to run games and apps off because it's a lot more compatible than some of these other formats here. APFS is gonna be the best one if you're gonna be using this drive exclusively with your Mac. So we'll select APFS and we're going to hit erase. And we can see that has been successful. There's no issues there at all. So we're gonna hit done. And now you can see that we have it appearing here. We've got the full two terabytes free and it's an APFS volume. So absolutely no issues. Now let's do a quick black magic disc speed test. So you can see how quick this particular drive is. Now, as I mentioned before, it is quite speedy. So let's see what speeds we can hit. So as you can see there, around 850 to 860 megabytes per second, which is very, very quick. For reference, my Samsung T5 SSD is only about 330 megabytes per second. So this is a lot faster. So let's stop that. Now, just quickly on the speeds, you guys don't necessarily need a super fast drive, but if you're gonna be doing stuff like editing footage or doing a lot of transferring, you do want something that's relatively quick, at least over around 500 megabytes per second, because if it's too slow, it's gonna take ages to transfer stuff and you're just not gonna have a good experience. Now, this is nowhere near as fast as the internal drive on the Mac. So let's actually try that out, shall we? So I've just selected the internal SSD on the Mac and we'll see how this compares to the NVMe drive I'm using. So as you can see there, that is pretty impressive. It's over 2000 megabytes per second and the read speed is almost up to 3000 megabytes per second. But again, guys, like you are really paying for this. You are paying the Apple tax in every sense of the word. So it might not be the most cost-effective upgrade for you guys. So what we'll do now is we'll actually put some apps onto this external drive. So let's open it up and you can see there it's completely empty. There's nothing in it. So let's actually put some apps in there. Now, these are some apps that I've already installed. Now, obviously you'd probably wanna be doing the largest apps here. You wanna transfer those over, but let's just say I don't use Blender that often. So all I can do is literally drag and drop it onto my NVMe drive. And then let's say, for example, I want to delete it off the internal hard drive on the Mac. And now if we close down applications, let's just open up the Blender and we'll open up a recent file. So let's do this one here. 
And as you can see there, that is working without any issues at all. The app's working, the animation's working, I can pan and tilt, and this entire thing is running off my external drive. So if we pause that and we come down here and we double click and we actually keep that in the dock, if I now close Blender and we won't save changes, you can see it's still appearing on the dock and if I click it again, that's just gonna open up straight away and we can come back to the recent file and that will also load fine without any issues as well. Okay, so what about games? Well, again, if you've installed games into your application folder, you can literally just drag and drop them onto your external hard drive. But if you're using Steam, it is a little bit different. So let's first of all, open up Steam. And what you wanna do first of all, is you wanna come up here and click on Steam. You wanna go preferences, and then you wanna to go to your downloads section in the preferences content libraries and you want to click on steam library folders now inside here you want to add a library folder and you want to come down here and you want to select nvme and then you want to select new folder and let's just call that steam library i'm going to click ok and then we're going to click select and you can see now that has added a new Steam game library on your Mac, which is on your NVMe drive. So if we click close and we click OK, let's actually come here to a game. And let's say, for example, we want to download Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Well, we can click install and then we can actually select where we want to install this to. So we can install it on the Mac hard drive or we can install it to the NVMe drive and we can click next. And that is going to download and then install onto your external drive. And then you'll be able to actually play this game on the external drive in the future. I'll add a clip now of me actually playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider on my MacBook Air using the NVMe drive. And you can see there, there's absolutely no issues at all. One thing I will mention is that NVMe drives in particular can get quite hot. And this particular drive certainly will get really hot if you're doing a lot of intense work, like transferring hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes of files in one go. But for just simple things like editing footage or playing games, there's gonna be absolutely no issues at all. And even if you are slamming it and it does get really hot and starts to heat up quite a bit, you will obviously see a decrease in read and write speed. But this particular drive is so quick, it doesn't really matter. You won't see much of a performance drop. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you found it helpful. If you do want to see that video on how I made a super, super fast and super cheap two terabyte NVMe SSD external drive, stay tuned on my channel for that video. But apart from that, guys, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.